along uh, as we take you through uh, what we're going to show you today with um, cloud files. Uh, I did start the recording, forgot to kick it off there at the beginning, just to let everybody know the uh, the meeting will be recorded. The meeting recordings are posted in the Cloudy County team that uh, everyone should have been invited to as a guest. So if you haven't gone through that process yet, uh, that gives you access to the team where we store resources and post news and stuff like that. Um, it's not required because we send the invites out to the whole group. Uh, but it is hopefully our goal is to make it a place that has a lot of value and that you'll want to go, you know, check it out and get some updates and news and and maybe watch a, a past recording if you want to uh, revisit a particular topic. But Joe, what's our topic uh, this this month? What are we doing here? We're going to dive into kind of one of the key aspects of taking advantage of Office 365, and that's uh, your files in the cloud and managing uh, documents as they live in uh, primarily OneDrive uh, teams and uh, something called SharePoint. So Joe, if you were gonna define, like let's back it up a second. We might've talked about this a little bit last month. Uh, our, our last month's topic was like, what is Office 365 and why should I even care? Uh, so we went over like what it is and how to access it, but all this stuff is, cloudy right so when we talk about cloud files joe like what would you how would you kind of summarize like what's going on when i say i've got a file in the cloud like what can you break that down a little bit uh you're using somebody else's computer <laughs> um <laughs> that's the first thing um, you've got uh, a number of a number of things come to mind there you've got a place where your documents are being uh, backed up secured um, and available from anywhere when you put stuff in the cloud, and especially with our files, with our extension agents. They often are working remotely in a field. They are at a county office. They are somewhere not at their computer, and getting these documents in the cloud enable them to access that more easily with a laptop, a tablet, a mobile device. Okay, so while I'm continuing to put you on the spot, I'm just going to keep rolling with that. So if the cloud is someone else's computer, so in that case, uh, refining that a little bit, it would mean Microsoft in this case, when we're talking about OneDrive, they run servers in a data center in the mountains of West Virginia or wherever. They've got several of those locations. That's where the files are. Uh, what What's the alternative? What, you know, and, and uh, not doing self-promotion here, but Joe and I have done a significant amount of work in our extension program, forklifting and moving files into OneDrive. So what did our file system kind of used to look like for our extension agents? Like what were some of the things that they struggled with? Sure. So our, you know, extension agents, especially in our, in our county offices, um, they have a traditional file server that's hosted uh, in their county. Um, in a server, in a room somewhere, hopefully a uh, dedicated space. Sometimes it's not available to that. And they would uh, often struggle getting to that data because they need to use a VPN or they need to get access through a county network. Uh, they might have to come through a virtual desktop environment. And a lot of those are difficult uh, to access or easy to kind of fumble through and, and gain access to their files that way. And that's some of the things that uh, barriers to entry that moving your files to the cloud uh, can reduce the, the burden of, of getting access to your data quickly and securely. Okay, well, I think, uh, again, our topic is mainly going to focus on a product called OneDrive, which, again, we touched on a little bit uh, last week, but now we're going to do a little bit deeper of a dive and kind of try to show you and illustrate why it's in our opinion and again this is an opinion show this is not a this is not a like industry fact you know this is Dwayne and joe telling you how we do it and what we like uh and hopefully it it, it makes sense uh but we've done a lot of work moving away from those older file servers where you might have what you call a, a network drive or a share drive or or the server you know whatever you refer to it as uh, we have eliminated all of those throughout our entire extension program. Uh, we have moved 
all of the data that our extension agents had on those servers, we have moved it into OneDrive and Teams. Uh, and it's really, I mean, we started that move right before COVID hit, and we we're very, very blessed to be doing that because when COVID hit, we were already in, you know, in transition of moving that stuff around. Uh, and so when work from home started, and extension is, I mean, extension is work from anywhere, right? Like extensions all over the place, really scattered. Uh, like Joe said, you might actually be in a field, who knows? Um, and the cloud is going to offer you some capabilities and some technology that you can't get with a file server. You can't get a uh, a mobile phone app that you can pull your phone out of your pocket and you can connect to the server that's inside your university. But Microsoft's published cloud applications and, and, and there's apps all over the place for all kinds of different things. And one of those is OneDrive. So you're going to see that you've got multiple uh, opportunities to access your data or multiple avenues to use to access your data, whether it's a computer or a web browser, a smartphone, a tablet, all of those can point at that one single true source of your files, which is OneDrive or Teams. So let's, uh, let me read through. So uh, Ted's saying that they're having kind of the same, the same issue, you know, and this is the thing I really, I'm, um, like we do extension in Florida and I have some experience with extension in other uh, other states, but it's really cool to to hear, you know, and, and see how are other universities doing it so that we can just get a, a better idea just for our own understanding and, you know, how we can kind of group think on some of these uh, some of these things. So uh, Penn State has moved over to OneDrive from Box and previously county servers before that. Uh, so they had like a little cloud stepping stone in, in between there, it sounds like. Um, Cornell supporting Box, but using Teams, and I assume uh, OneDrive uh, with that as well. Uh, so we're going to show you some basics and get started, but Joe, you look like you're about yeah, to... Yeah, one one thing, um, you have a, a graphic sometimes you like to show. I can't remember if there's a short URL for that about um, when we put our files in the cloud, where, where do they go? Um, and you mentioned you know, the East Coast somewhere in some data, massive data center run by Microsoft. Um, I think we like to talk about that a little bit um, with our extension agents and our researchers around security of those files uh, and their availability. And when we put those files up in OneDrive, there's also a process that we like to talk about where that data is replicated to the other coast. Somewhere there is a a partner data center on the other side of the, the country where your files are replicated to. So um, we've had we've had one event in, I think we we're probably eight years on, eight, nine years on with Office 365, where there was a, a temporary uh, failover event where our files went read only for about an hour, um, where we went through an incident and still had access. So there was some major process happening at our, at our primary data center, but we were still able to get access to that content. Um, read only for a while until they fixed it. So that's another nice thing that uh, we have available and something, especially our researchers like to know, they have to do a grant or something like that. They have to know where their data is living and how that's backed up. Yeah, there's the, the graphic I was thinking of. Yeah. Try to put you on the spot. Hey, you know, I found you know it. Know where they're at. <laughs> it was in there somewhere. Uh, yeah. So these, this is the the U.S. region um, of Microsoft's cloud, and these are all these little things are uh, where stuff goes. Now, realizing here that you know this this particular graphic was built for our audience in in uh, in Florida, uh, so our data goes to uh, here, which is in uh, Virginia. And then like Joe said, everything you do, Microsoft on your behalf copies it, it all the way over to California. Now it's gonna work a little bit different, differently if you're in the central uh, region or Western region of the United States, it might flip around a little bit. But the, the main point is here, the, the main point is the data that you put in the cloud gets completely duplicated to a whole nother region of the United States, uh, which compared to what we used to do, like for for Florida, it, you know, the servers that we ran, you know, we copied data around, we did backups, you know, we did our nerd thing, but I can't afford to completely duplicate everything you do all the way across the country. 
Uh, so this is really cool. This is this is one of the things that one of those advantages you get with the cloud is the sheer resiliency and safety of putting stuff up there. Uh, you know, you get a lot of capabilities that you could never get, uh, or probably in our case at IFAS, never be able to afford uh, to to move stuff around. Um, now it, like it will replicate. It will replicate your mistakes. It will will replicate your deletions. It will replicate your um, overwrites of files. But uh, today we're going to show you how those are something that you can personally recover from using these tools. Yeah, let's uh, let's dig in. So. Uh, if everybody, if, you know, hopefully those of you who were here with us last week, remember what I said about where do you start when you want to do something with Office 365, like the starting page, the starting hub, whatever you might want to call it. And we always advise our users, go to office.com. Office.com, this is where you're going to start with all the apps and see all the things uh, and be able to to access all the data. And again, you can use right right here. Uh, we're already showing the the flexibility of this. Is I'm already seeing files, and I could do this from my home computer. I could do this from my parents' computer if I was at their house, or you know wherever you might be visiting family. So because this stuff has been lifted up into the cloud and has been put in a location that's centrally accessible you get options for accessing it. There's no VPN. You know, I, if, if y'all are familiar with using VPN, uh, I didn't have to do that here. I see a comment about um, confidentiality and uh, hacking potential and those types of things. Uh, that's a good point to bring up. If you say my data is more accessible, does that mean it's more accessible to hackers as well? Uh, and in my opinion, I would say it's it's even safer because you're going to see as we go through this, your recovery capabilities, if there was a hack, are way, way more powerful uh, than what we were able to do with file servers in Florida. Uh, your account credentials, you know, the account that you use to sign in here, that's where that security starts. So hopefully your university is using some sort of um, multi-factor authentication. You may hear it called 2FA, MFA duo uh, authenticator app, you know, those types of words. Basically the fact that to sign into a service, you also have to like get your phone and push a button on your phone or do do something, uh, do something there. So that's the first biggest level of security or biggest layer of security there is protecting your account. Um, Once you uh, get in or go let ahead, me, Joe. let me follow up on that a little bit more is um, some other things there, are, I think, maybe around your confidentiality agreements and things like that. Um, everything that is stored in uh, Office 365 uh, at rest. So um, your files, when you're not using them up in the cloud, even your email where your email lives, if you're using Office 365 Exchange Online is all encrypted at rest. Um, what that means is those those files are if someone was to pull a hard drive and walk out of it somehow out of a high security data center, they're still not going to get access to that content that's sitting there all encrypted. And your university has the potential to um, set up the ability where that encryption um, is only the university, your university can even decrypt it. Um, also, your university uh, may decide what types of files you're allowed to put up into the cloud. So you want to pay attention to what, what they offer and, and allow Microsoft, if you follow their guidelines, um, supports uh, uh, HIPAA, PHI, high trust, um, those kind of documents up there, they, they provide uh, and approve of those kind of documents. Your university may not. You want to follow those, those rules. Yeah. And that's important to note is your internal policy might be very different than what Microsoft says, here's what we support. And Microsoft, when you create a uh, subscription with Microsoft, you are protected uh, with, a, with an agreement um, that kind of covers you in case Microsoft screws up. Doesn't cover you, cover you if you screw up, but it, it covers you if Microsoft messes up, so. Uh, so that's a good, that's a really good point to bring up though, is, uh, uh, and we, we hear that a lot. Like as soon as, as soon as I put my files in the cloud, is my stuff at risk now of getting stolen or deleted or hacked, or is it still even mine? 
Uh, and I feel like the answer to that is yes, it's still yours. And you're going to see a lot of the really, I, ju I just really can't, I just need to show you, like, I just need to shut up and start showing you. <laughs> so when we get to office.com, uh, remember what this is called up here at the top left, this is our waffle. So our app launcher from the app launcher, you'll see OneDrive. So we're going to take a peek at my OneDrive that I have here in the, the ship show, um, subscription and what do I have going on? So, uh, I can see the whole folder structure of my OneDrive. I can click on, go into my documents folder. I've got a document here. I can click on it and I can work on it using office for the web. Uh, this allows me full editing capability of this document. I don't have to have office installed on my computer at all. This is totally free and included with every part of office, uh, office 365. So I can work on my document, um, maybe add, add some new stuff here at the bottom and it's automatically saved. So notice here it's if you, I don't know if you caught that, I'll, let me kind of direct your gaze here to the top left. I'm going to, uh, type some stuff. It says saving it's saved. So as soon as I make an edit, that edit is captured and saved and, and is a part of my document now. Uh, so that's, you'll, you'll see that in the desktop app as well. Uh, one thing that happens when that save kicks off is, um, and this is a beautiful part of the cloud is every single time you edit a file and save those changes to that file, the cloud is going to create what's called a new version of that file. And this is one of the things that just absolutely blows like a regular file server out of the water. If you click on the document title and go to version history, you're going to see over here on the right that 55 minutes ago, I created this file and I don't have that edit that I did down at the bottom. But just now I worked on that file and here is the edit and it's highlighted for me to let me know what's been, what's the, what's the difference between these two versions. What's been added? This is incredible because a backup, like a traditional, like I'll put my IT nerd hat on for a second, a traditional backup runs at a certain time of day. You know, maybe your university backs up your file server at eight o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock noon, and five o'clock in the evening, you know, and that's a pretty aggressive backup schedule. That's pretty good. This is going to capture changes in a document within minutes. So if I go um, back to my document and I'm going to add some more stuff, document, saving, 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 saved. Now, if I click this again and look at version history, well, <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> oh, I love demos that are live. Try that again. It might be um, maybe just too too close to the same time period of those edits. Um, yeah, maybe about five minutes between your you know your kind of edits and versions uh, are gonna kind of. There show we up. go. There we go. I had to refresh. <laughs> it's still it's apparently still like making a version, so we'll give it a second. But you're going to get versions, uh, especially using the desktop app, which I'll show off here after this because the web app is a little bit different. Um, you're going to get versions. You know, Joe and I have seen versions that were two to three minutes apart from one another. Uh, so as soon as you as soon as you make a change, uh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have the the new version. Theoretically, if the demo actually would work <laughs> and we're getting uh, the default is 500 versions. So 500, um, you know, recent kind of changes that happen over the lifetime of that document. The last 500 are going to be saved. Um, that's just a default. You can go, I think, to 50,000 <laughs> if you really wanted to. Uh, we have some documents that we work on often that I think we're in, what, 1200 range of versions. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it keeps, uh, it keeps the last 500 of those available to you. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that cloud. Sometimes the cloud takes a minute, you know, all the gerbils and hamster wheels are running and, you know, then you get what you need. Um, 
And so, yeah, there's a three minute delta between these uh, between these two versions here. And here's my highlighted stuff that I added to the document. Uh, so this just kind of shows off the again, the integrity, I think, that you get when you put a file in the cloud. This the um, little safety net, if you will, that you get, like if you want to collaborate on on stuff with someone else, it's really not that scary, you know, because if they make an edit that you don't like, you have the ability to go back and see what it was and undo it or recover it. Um, you know, how, how, would like, you, how do you do that, Dwayne, in that? If you wanted to bring that document back to that original state. Yeah, so from version history, you could go back here and then there's a restore button. And, uh, and there you go. Now, one of the things, another thing about this, I keep saying one of the things, there's like a billion things about this that's just so good. So I'll just keep rolling with that. You don't need to call IT to do this. <laughs> you know, you, not that we don't like talking to our users, that's totally fine. We love, we love talking to them and supporting them, but you don't have to open a support ticket to do what I just did. You are in control of your data. You have access to all those quote unquote backups of it. You don't need to open a ticket or call a help desk or have somebody jump on the phone and tell them, you know, what time you were working on your document last. Uh, you have complete control over getting that stuff back. And some of the worst cases we've heard is when you, when on a file server, when you overwrite a file and um, kind of lose, lose that um, whole file that way, it, it's, it's kind of really, you're, you're lost at that state. And this just creates a new version. This just yep. continues to create a new version. Yeah. So if you made a file edit um, offline, if you made a file edit with the same file name somewhere else, not connected to your OneDrive and copied it in, it would just create a new version. Um, and you would be able to still recover in that kind of environment. There's a comment in the chat kind of questioning the differences between the browser version of Word in the desktop app version of Word. And I'll say the browser versions are convenient. Uh, they're not where I would want to be if I were doing a lot of work. Uh, I prefer the desktop suite personally, but the browser versions are very good. And in some cases, Microsoft's idea here is, you know, the, the desktop versions of Office cost a lot of money. And in some cases, you might have a what they would might refer to as a light information worker. You know, maybe they only check into a computer once a week or something like that. Well, this might be totally adequate. Uh, and there are, you know, it's good to pay attention to the web versions of these because sometimes there's features in them that are not in the desktop version yet. Sometimes it might come to, uh, and we're going to show you one of those, but it might come to the um, the word in web before it actually ever makes it to the desktop. So. Uh, let's go back to the OneDrive folder and I'll show you here too on this document. If I click this little three dots, so hopefully we said this last week, don't know if we did, but anytime you want more information, anytime you want to see more settings or more things that you can do, always look for like three little dots, you know, you're going to see them all over the place. There's three little dots everywhere. So that's a very consistent thing throughout all of Office 365. Uh, if you click the three dots, you can access the version history of the file there as well, and you can see version. This is a little bit of a more classic interface than what we just had in, in, while we were in Word, uh, but you can do that there, and you can open it and look at it and restore it as uh, from there as well. So let me show you what this would look like on my computer. Joe, you got anything more we you think we should touch on on uh, office.com? Um, okay. No, that's good. I think we'll show sharing in the, uh, I like to show sharing, I think, in the in the desktop app. Okay. So I'm going to shrink my browser down. So we're out of the browser. And if you look down here at the bottom right, there's a little blue, a little blue dude down there running. That is a application that comes with Windows 10, uh, or in this case, on, my, on this system, Windows 11, that allows you to connect a folder on your computer to OneDrive. Uh, so when I open my file explorer, over here on the left, I have the exact same folder layout synchronized down to my computer. Uh, the important part to remember here is your files are in one place, most like the authoritative place is the cloud, and your 
computer has the ability to connect to the cloud to look at them and play with them and, and work on them. Uh, so if I go into my documents, here's that same exact document. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Now I'm working in the desktop version of Word with more power, more capability, more plugins and stuff like that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, this is another edit for the demo. And notice it's still doing the same thing. If we look at the top left, because I'm running Office 365 desktop, it's doing auto save. So as soon as this save is finished, I can go check it online and we should see the exact same changes. Once it finishes saving. <laughs> This is always the trouble with live uh, <laughs> with live demos. Um, there we go. Uh, let me refresh here. Come on. Joe, do you love live demos as much as I do right now? <laughs> <laughs> We'll give it a second. The cloud's running behind a little bit today. We'll keep moving, but trust me, this is the same exact file and it will synchronize. Uh, oh, there it went. It synchronized those changes. We it should... was saving to your, your computer and then synchronizing. Yeah, or it's just gonna make a liar out of me and uh, embarrass me, so that's okay. Thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Give it a second. To, it's, it's clouds run, It's running on its own time today. Um, I'm actually in this file twice. Uh, so theoretically, like you should be able to see like if it were synchronizing and working. There we go. It's actually co-authoring now. Like I'm seeing the exact same edits in real time as I make them uh, versus uh, if I were in the browser or in the desktop app. So you'll notice, like I said, the same exact structure, all these folders and files and stuff like that, you're going to see the same thing when you connect your computer to your uh, cloud OneDrive. Now you'll notice there's like all these little icons and stuff going on here. So let's talk about those icons for a second. Joe, we had a, we had a picture somewhere. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, but you want to talk about what's going on here? Like I've got a good variety here. Sure, sure. There's going to be a different status for those documents that you'll want to understand. Typically, the default when you first connect OneDrive, the default is those files are going to only live in the cloud still, but you're going to know that they exist on your local computer. You're going to see the files, you're going to see the folder structure, but they're not yet actually copied. They're, they're not, I don't want to say copy, but there's not... Um, the, the makeup of those files are not yet on your computer or your laptop um, until you click on them and open them. And then they change to a different icon. They go change from that cloud, that clear cloud, um, to a blue, uh, I'm sorry, a green icon with uh, a check. And that means that you've, you've opened that file, you've worked on it locally, it's available on your computer at that, at that time. If you were to lose internet connectivity, uh, walk away from your Wi-Fi connection, something that's green like that, you're still going to have access to and can open that file and edit it and work on it. And actually, when you do that kind of work, where you're doing that offline, you're not on a network connection. When you reconnect to the internet, that file is going to synchronize back up to the cloud, back into that file uh, for you. If you have been collaborating on a document with multiple people and Perhaps you're responsible for, you know, page two of a document and they're responsible for page three. Those changes are going to automatically merge and that document is going to be just fine. And the, the, the third state of a document um, that you can see there is the solid green uh, icon with a, a, a light white checkbox. And that is something that you've decided. I always want this on my desktop, my laptop. I always want that file available to me. And that's something you would do prior to travel. Maybe you're going to go on site somewhere and you want this folder, of uh, this project folder. You want that on your laptop. You can force that to keep it on your device and it will always be there uh, available for you whenever you leave, uh, leave your network. That's a good summary. Yeah. 
And, and it's important to to note, like your OneDrive capacity, depending on how your university has your OneDrives configured, your OneDrive could have a pretty significant amount of storage space. Uh, our OneDrives are set up to contain uh, 5,000 gigs is the capacity. Um, and those icons are really important because if you if you try to connect your computer, you know, maybe you've got a new laptop, but it has a small hard drive in it and you connected it to your OneDrive and it just downloaded everything. Not only would it take a million years to download everything, it would fill up the hard drive on your computer. So what this allows you to do is selectively pick and choose what you need on your computer uh, by and, and it does it automatically just by double clicking it. And that's where you get these check marks with the, the, the white background and the little check. If you decide that you don't need these files anymore, you know, like I'm done with this entire folder, uh, I'm done with this project, you know, what, whatever it might be. So if I go to uh, my OneDrive and I think I was putting those in pictures. Yeah. So if I back up and I just right click and uh, go to free up space or you can do this little fly out in Windows 10. It's a little bit different in Windows 10. I think it would look more like. More like this in Windows 10. Uh, you can say free up space. And it's you're going to see the little swirly icon there for a second. Remember that swirl is like a file is actively syncing between your computer and the cloud. When you go into it, now they're hollow check marks or they're hollow little clouds. They're no longer consuming any space on my computer. If I right mouse click on it and view the properties of the file, getting a little nerdy here, but just to prove it, the size of the file is 456 kilobytes, but the size on my disk is zero. Uh, so this is how you can you can kind of game the system here a little bit with having five terabytes of storage in the cloud and running it off of a laptop with a 500 gig hard drive or a 256 gig uh, hard drive. How, how do you uh, how do you check how much storage you've been given? How yeah, find that the easiest way to do that is if you have the OneDrive app running on your computer. And this is something I would if you're using OneDrive now, follow along and you'll you'll see how this works on your system. If you right click on the little cloud down here near your clock uh, and you're going to get this menu that pops down from the bottom or from the top, sorry. Uh, and if you click settings, it's going to show you right here how much you're using out of how much you've been allocated. Now, this is a demo computer, a demo account, so I'm not using a whole lot, uh, but it's really nice to see like I've got five terabytes of storage that is a lot <laughs> that's a whole lot your university might be different they may have it set to one you may have to ask them to set it to five they may set it to five out of the box i don't know but uh it can go to five and that is free of charge uh from from microsoft it it um technically can go up to 25 terabytes yep um, is yep. the maximum that that can be pushed it just depends on again some some licensing and the number of accounts you have in your subscription. But typically, uh, typically in EDU, you're going to typically we've seen in EDUs that the amount of storage is more than you probably are consuming on across your entire campus is available in the SharePoint uh, in, in, your, in your Office 365 cloud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we've we've uh, done a lot of moving for our extension program and they didn't have enough to fill up two teams worth. Yeah, so. Uh, but this is, yeah, that's the quickest way to see how much space you have, how much space are you using? If you want to have a more technical breakdown of like, where am I using space? Like maybe you're trying to track something down, you know, maybe you've got a whole bunch of data being consumed and you can't figure out where it came from. If you click this manage storage link right here, it will take you to your web browser to a special little page on office.com that's connected to your OneDrive and you're going to get like a breakdown of where are the folders that are the biggest and then you can like drill into them and say okay uh I'm in Teams chat files and now I've got you know these this is using a whole bunch of of space now and you would be able to discover that and again you don't have to call anybody <laughs> you can go right into right into this yourself uh through the through the OneDrive page Another, while we're talking kind of storage and, and stuff like that, another, um, you know, we talk about the limitation you might be given with the amount of storage you've been given. Uh, another limitation that 
uh, users like to know about is the file size. So the maximum uh, file size is 250 gigabytes uh, for a file that can go in here. We occasionally have found a researcher uh, with some files over that size. Um, it's been rare. Uh, that's a, it's a pretty significant file size. Yeah, it's very rare that we run into that. But dealing with large files, one thing that's really uh, useful to know is the sync, the sync here, the sync tool agent, OneDrive agent, whatever you might call it, has the capability to do something called differential sync. So if you are working with a large file, let's say it's 100 gigs in size or uh, something like that. If you open that file, let's say it's a video and you're editing the video, and you make a few changes, and now that file is 101 gigs in size. When you save that file and close out of it, and, my, and, and uh, your video editor releases its like hold on that file, and the OneDrive agent says, hey, I need to upload that, it's gonna actually calculate the difference between what's on your computer and what's already in the cloud, and it's only gonna synchronize the difference. So you're not going to have to re-upload an entire 101 gig file you're going to upload approximately one gigs as it calculates the differences between those two files. So that's a very useful thing because I can tell you <laughs> I'm very, very, very familiar with rural extension internet connections and every little bit counts as far as how we can manage those, uh, those internet connections that you have and use them as wisely as we can, especially with all of our online programming and stuff now. Uh, I did want to show... We showed the versioning thing in a Word document, but I wanted to show it. Uh, let me see if I can well, open this picture. So when I open this picture, you might have saw it immediately downloaded the file, right? So this is a little picture that I'm working on. And I'm going to make um, some edits. I'm going to grab my pen and uh, I'm say, uh, oh, that wasn't very big, was it? Maybe I need a bigger pen. <laughs> Maybe I'll grab an eraser. You know, I'm just going to start erasing stuff. And oh man, my three year old got a hold of my my pen and started messing up my document. Um, and now I'm going to save it. And so if I close out of it, you're going to see the sync. You might have missed it, but it briefly showed the sync. And if I go back into it, Here's my super messed up file, <laughs> right? This is terrible. Uh, but remember, we have versioning. So even you can access versioning through the online side, or you can access it through uh, the OneDrive menu here on your computer. So I can right click the file, go to version history. I can go back to this one, um, click restore. Give it a second and just really hope that the demo actually works this time <laughs> instead of <And> real <laughs> crashing. quick. What what it, what that did is actually just took that previous version and made it a new version. So uh, you had two versions. Now you had three technically. Yep. Yep. So it took the it took version one, which was good, and it bumped it all the way to the top and made it my current version. So I could still go back and see the scribbly one if I wanted to. Uh, but here's my freshly you know un unmessed up uh file and this is not an office file this was just a this was just a little picture file so definitely wanted to illustrate and point out that that versioning power that you get is not specific to just microsoft documents uh it's across everything that you put inside of your onedrive as soon as you edit it and save it and that say that save synchronizes you get a new version of that Something uh, just thinking of here, Dwayne, uh, that's helpful to people to understand too, the synchronization process. Uh, you may have processes at your university where you need to um, upload a file to a service. Maybe you need to upload receipts into some, uh, you know, some, some uh, purchasing website of some sort. And that's difficult to do when you are only working inside of a web browser and, and you can't really move that into some other web browser's service. So that's where that synchronization process is helpful to syn synchronize your files from the cloud to your computer. Because then, then they act just like if like you previously had a file server or those, those files are actually on your computer. Those are easy to upload into uh, a website, uh, some type of service like that. 
Yeah, this is kind of an, an example here. Like if you had to upload a receipt and you were only ever using OneDrive in the cloud and that's where your receipt was and you're using PeopleSoft or whatever it might be that you're using and you click the upload or attach or whatever and you get this little box, this little dialog box. If you don't have the files synchronized, there's no way for me to tell this box, hey, grab that file right there. Uh, so so what Joe's saying is, is we run into this a lot. And so we have a lot of users, most of our users. And in fact, in IFAS, we've actually configured all IFAS systems to automatically log the OneDrive agent in and initiate sync. Uh, so it happens automatically for, for our people right now. But you may, depending on what your university is doing, you may need to actually go and type in, uh, you know, OneDrive and start the app and sign into it. But yeah, that that is a very good point. This gives you the ability to work with files that are in the cloud, but still look at them like you would if it was a network share, like through File Explorer. Now, this is what uh, we're going to talk about some collaboration stuff. So collaboration takes a whole new turn when you have files in the cloud. If you have files on your file server, you can share them probably with each other, uh, other people within the university, but getting files to people outside the university can be a challenge. And one of the things that we see happen a lot of times is email attachments. <laughs> and email attachments are very frustrating because how many of you have worked on a policy or a proposal or something like that and you've got like proposal v1 and then you send it out to all your your peers and they review it and they return back with like you know you send it to five people all five of them make their own edits and then they send back five different documents you consolidate it all down and then you send it back out. All right, now here's proposal V2, or maybe you underscore DH and you got your initials on the end of it or final, 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 final. <laughs> you know what? This is the final one. You end up with like 25 different files at some point that you're trying to reconcile and, and assemble back together. So what I would kind of in, encourage you to think is this little mantra that somebody at our school said, one file, one place. You want to keep the file that you want to be worked on in one place and provide everyone access to that place to work on that one file together. And uh, again, this is a cloud powered technology. This only is going to work in the cloud. So if you have a file, you can right click on it and we'll go to OneDrive and I'll say share. Now your defaults might look different. Uh, but basically what you're going to get is like two or three little areas that you need to pay attention to here. The first thing is what kind of permission or what kind of audience are you going to share this to? So if you, it's not intuitive menu in my opinion, but if you click this first thing here, you're going to get these different options. So you could say anyone with the link. This means this is a completely anonymous, no authentication required. If this gets posted on a Facebook, everybody could click on it and see that file. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want a publicly shared file. Uh, maybe that's totally fine, but maybe you just want a specific person to work on it, you know, or uh, maybe only people who are inside of your university should have the ability to see it. So you'll have these different options here. So I'm gonna say specific people, and uh, I'm also going to allow them to edit. So this, if this is not checked, they get a share that's a read-only version of this file. So I'll allow them to edit. You can also do review-only mode. I haven't really, Joe, have you played with this? Like where they can only leave comments. They can't edit the document, but I, they can I think it just forces it, it to open up in view only so that I, typically the file would open up in edit mode immediately. Um, and a lot of times people are just wanting to view a file and they accidentally start editing it. Uh, so that just uh, helps the person start in that kind of review mode and really take a, a con you know, a conscious decision to switch to editing. Yeah. So uh, in the interface here, I typed in Joe's name and I could type in a message, please review this document and I could click send and that would just fire it off. Uh, that would just fire it off to Joe. He would get an email in a second. Another thing that you could do is because I've created this share, 
I can also get a link that specifically only works for Joe. So I can under copy link, I'll click copy and I have this link here. I'm going to copy it and I could like open up teams. Go over to my chat and say, uh, please review this and paste it in there. Looks pretty gnarly. <laughs> Sometimes Outlook will trim it down and make it look better. Or teams will trim it down and make it look better. Uh, but I just sent him a link to it. So he now has access to this document. Um, and again, hopefully this demo works. <laughs> so there we go. I see Joe Gasper is here. Joe has this document open. So because he was signed into his office.com and computer with his Joe.Gasper account, it gave him access. And I can see Joe moving around inside of the document. So here's Joe and Joe can, you know, just start, I don't know, typing stuff, you know, make mess, mess up my mess up my document. So this is basically real time. So this is Joe working on this document live with me right now. This is super, super powerful, kind of, I don't want to call it basic, but this hasn't been around for a very, I mean, this has been around for a very long time, but it hasn't been mainstream for a very long time because we're all so um, stuck in file servers and stuff. So how many of you have had a file that was on the file server and you double click it and it says this file is currently locked because so-and-so has it open. Would you like to open it in read-only mode? <laughs> when you move into the cloud, that can't happen. The cloud is going to allow multiple people inside of a document at the same time to work on it. We've Joe, had, we've had, oh yeah, yeah you're going to say, think we, I think we had uh, like 60 <laughs> people in an Excel file once just to During see training. what happened. So um, it, was it was survivable. Uh, <laughs> I what recommend Microsoft doing. recommends about, I think, 10 at a time. I think mostly for your mental state is what's going on. <laughs> uh, I think the limit is like 99, uh, which would be crazy. But yeah. Um, so from inside of this, since we have this saved, I'm going to go ahead and look. Same thing that I did in the online version. You click the title of the document up here at the top. Why did that get smaller? And then you have version history. So now I can see a new version has been created and I can also see who did that version. So there's not only is there integrity of the ability to go back in time and get a previous version or the original of that document, there's accountability because we know who done it. <laughs> so not that Teams is like, or that OneDrive is telling on you, uh, but it is good to know like, hey, Joe, why'd you make that edit? Is that, you know, what you want, whatever. Uh, you can have some discussion about it. So, uh, the other thing that we can do with files that are in the cloud that may appeal to the extension um, crowd specifically is statistics. So, I'm going to go to this file and kind of like hover over it. And I see that it has had four views. I can click on those four views. I get a little histogram of like, what's been going on. So it's been two unique people. So it says two viewers and it's been viewed six times. I know extension has to collect data. <laughs> so if you were to share this file externally with a, anyone with this link could view it, you would get some statistics on how many people were viewing that file and looking at it. Now you're not going to be able to collect demographic data, first name, last name, those types of things, but you will have some measure of impact of what happened with that file that you produced or put up. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick that I absolutely love to do when it comes to emailing files, because I just told you earlier, stop doing email attachments and let's stick to, um, let's stick to, sorry, uh, one file, one place mentality. So when you're inside of Outlook and I'll uh, send this over to Joe, and I'll say, uh, please review this file. Um, we'll do that. Uh, thanks. So I'm going to send him a file. If I go to attach file, but don't actually hit the paperclip, I hit the little drop down instead. I can do browse web locations. And I can browse my OneDrive. And I can go into documents. And I can say share a link to this file instead of 
attaching a whole new copy of this file. When you do an attachment, you're creating a new copy of that file entirely. So if I do share a link, it looks just the same. It looks just the same way, right? It's still there on the little bar where files would usually be pinned. But when somebody clicks it, it's actually going to open the version that's stored in my OneDrive. So I've used this trick before. Don't tell my, my users, but when we're about to do a big project, if I have a flyer or an announcement or an infographic or something that I've created, I'll email that to the distribution list and let them know, hey, here's what we're about to do. This is what it means, you know, and I'll have that flyer attached and I'll do a OneDrive share. And if I know I emailed 100 people and I go back in a couple of days later and I look at the statistics and I see that only 25 people have actually looked at the flyer, <laughs> I have a pretty good idea of how successful this project's going to be when I show up and start moving stuff around and they haven't even looked. Uh, and I know I need to take some more uh, initiative to get them to look at that data. This is like a really insider insider tip, uh, gaining access to those statistics uh, and using it in that way. Uh, Laura asked yeah. a great question about what if the people haven't been given, given access to the file yet? And that is something you need to take into consideration. Um, we might be able to change, you can change permission right there uh, based on how you want that file to be accessed, knowing your audience. Uh, so like anyone inside the organization can view, that would work very well for my scenario that I just gave you. I'm going to email all the users at a research center and tell them, hey, I'm about to do this. I could just say anybody in my organization can view. Like, do I really need to be that granular and give 100 specific people access to the file? Probably not. Uh, you do have recipients, though. Um, so if you did have 100 recipients on there, it's going to take care of that for you. Uh, if it's a public thing, you know, anyone can view. That would be a publicly accessible document. And if you have uh, a document maybe has some sensitivity around it, if you were to put that in an email attachment, it's very easy for someone to email that around to other people um, or accidentally. Um, sometimes we have documents go out to a listserv where they meant to send it to a single person. If it's a share link that you've provided and you've set it to specific people, um, even if those people push that email out around to others, they're not going to have access to that document. So there is, you know, that can help you, um, you know, make sure you've got only the specific, specific set of people you want to have access to those documents at any time. Yeah, you are in control. And uh, this will bring me to probably, I think, one of our last um, kind of concepts here with OneDrive and, and all that. You are going to see as you use teams, you're going to see that there are there are files in teams, right? These files are using the same type of storage system that OneDrive is using. OneDrive is your files like all these files that are in OneDrive belong to you exclusively and you have the option, the control, the ability to make a decision on if you share something with someone. Uh, also, it's important to note that you can share an entire folder also. You don't have to share specific files. So th that's the core difference. The th the, what I like to say is OneDrive is your files and Teams is y'all's files, right? Teams the files that you put in Teams automatically belong to anybody that you add to the team. They're going to get access to those files to edit them, to work on them and collaborate on them because that's what Teams is all about, right? It's about collaboration. I'm going to show you a super cool trick on how to make your life a little bit easier when you're trying to access files that you're working on that are stored inside of a team. You are not restricted to only going through this little files tab to find the stuff that you want to work on. So uh, if I go to my test team here, and I click the files tab, you're gonna see a button here that says open in SharePoint. Now, if you hear the word SharePoint, don't run away. It's not that bad. Uh, we've had <laughs> a lot of people have used SharePoint in the past and been like, I don't wanna deal with this. But just trust me, this is worth it. So let me, let me just create a dummy file in here real quick, uh, demo PowerPoint. 
I don't actually want to work on it. So we're going to close out of it. So now I've got a single file here, right? So I'm going to go and click open in SharePoint. And this is going to take me to the SharePoint site behind my team. So SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, the storage is all fairly synonymous. They're all using the same technology. But the big, the biggest thing to take away from here is on this bar at the top, there is a little link that says add shortcut to OneDrive. If I click add shortcut to OneDrive, it's going to create a shortcut to the general channel of my team directly in my OneDrive. And if I go back to the root of my OneDrive, I now have this new folder with that little, kind of hard to see, there's like a little chain link thing on it and there's a little chain link thing there too. And if I double click it, there's a file that's inside of Teams. So I can connect this team storage of all the teams that I'm working on and kind of ad hoc bring in little bits and pieces of those into my OneDrive app so that I can just work on them just like I would any other file inside of my OneDrive. This what if you've got uh, two or three teams and you want to bring that general channel in? Yeah, so shortcut. this yeah, this is a good good point, Joe. Every single team has a general channel, so you don't want to end up with like a whole bunch of general channels. Uh, you can rename these shortcuts, and it mm -hmm. won't affect anybody else. That rename is a personal view to you only. So I can just um, right click here and just say test team uh, general, and that's done. Right. I like to put an underscore on some of mine if I want to throw them up to the to the top. So. Uh, we got three minutes left, Joe. We got anything? You got yeah, so you got. Uh, uh, we've got a we've got a question, um, but I thought we could maybe show the mobile apps just to make sure they know they exist uh -uh, real quick. Yes, yeah. Um, so while Joe's getting that queued up, we'll uh, Ted, we'll do your question in just one second. I promise. Um, the mobile apps are really, really, really cool. They are again, when you have a file server, this is the kind of stuff that is not even possible to use. So couple of apps out there that you need to get. OneDrive, for sure, and Office Mobile, which is free uh, for both iPhone and, and Android. You can see uh, the OneDrive app here on the left. Um, here's a demo document that uh, we had had been shared with me. So my home screen is gonna show me my, my most recent files I've been working on. And that'll be the same on my desktop. It will kind of match up. If I've been working on a file in Word on my desktop, I come into OneDrive homepage. Um, I'm going to see those same kind of list of files. I can get access to all of my OneDrive folders and and walk through here. I can even get to a team. So as Dwayne just showed you, this is a shortcut to a team. So this is not my OneDrive, but it's a shortcut to the files in one of my favorite teams. And I can just drill in through there and walk into all those files um, and access them this way. Um, Except when you try to demo it live. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, drop it in there for the first time. So, um, oops, open that up. Here we go. Went to sleep on my phone, I think. <laughs> uh, yes, it did. So this is a little difficult to share your mobile devices through the uh, through uh, the internet uh, this way here. So let's switch to Office. Let's see if this one's still alive. Um, but this is the Office app. It also has a lot of great features around. Uh, this is you can get to your OneDrive files in here. Also, um, there's a number of actions you can do, which we find really helpful, especially when you're remote. Uh, take pictures of a of a receipt and convert it into a PDF file. Your mobile device can become a scanner built right into this device, and all of this will integrate into your OneDrive. You can upload it straight into a team. So yeah, these are definitely a couple of uh, apps you'll want to you'll grab as you kind of transition your files in, into the cloud. All right, so it's three o'clock on the nose. Uh, so the way, if, if you're new here, the way that we like to work these community calls is we start off with some what's new, which we didn't really do this time because uh, our community is still growing. Uh, we do our feature highlight, which in this case was cloud file management, mostly through OneDrive, but we sprinkled some teams in there too. And then we kill the recording and open it up for open discussion, Q&A, and, and uh, any, anything you want to talk about. It doesn't even have to be related to this particular topic. Uh, 
One thing I would ask is if you're finding the content we're doing useful, uh, please share the sign up link with with others because we want more people to kind of discover this. And um, also tell us, give us super honest feedback. Like, is this useful? Do you think what we're doing is going to have uh, a good effect on on extension as a whole? That's that's our goal is to try to offer some cloudy education of what we do uh, to all, you know, we're extending our IT knowledge out to uh, extend the extension community. So uh, we'd love it if you'd share that and uh, kind of help us help us grow this a little bit. But Joe, you got anything to say before I turn the recording off? No, I think that's great. Uh, thanks for joining us today. All Let's, right. Uh, take some questions. Kill the recording and then Ted, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start with you, my friend. What you got?